welcome back to Blast Furnace Media interview series featuring heavy metal. And I'm your host, Jasmine St. Clair. I'm standing here with Dan the Man. It's actually Dan Dismal, but we've been calling you Dan the Man this week. Do you know why? Well, I was born as a man, but I don't know. Dan's actually the one responsible for putting on Mini Murder Fest. How long have you actually been doing? Why are you flirting with these girls? I'm over here. No, no, not those girls. I'm flirting with them dudes. Oh, okay. Look at that stuff. That's sexual chocolate. Right. Yes. So how long have you been doing this? Uh, I've been promoting shows since probably the early 90s. The, the murder... 90s? Yeah, oh yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm only 22. Okay, so right, okay. This is kind of illegal. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, the murder fest has been going on since 2003. Okay. So, but then it was a 2003, then 2005, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then we had to stop because our venue shut down. Which one was that? The Knitting Factory in Hollywood, yeah. That's really bad right now. Yeah, that was a, it was a big detriment to the scene because I used to do tons of shows there. So, I mean, we had three different rooms. You had one that held 150, one that did four, and then one that did 900, and then you opened them all up and then just yeah. let people run wild like Serengeti lions, you know, arr, going crazy. Did you, to, did you play in a band before? Uh, yeah, I have played in plenty of bands. I have uh, the vocalist at Crematorium has been around since 91, 25 years now. Uh, play guitar and the Dolomite Project played guitar in another band called Pride Killer, which is members of uh, Crowbar, Crisis. It was like a super band. We never put out the record, but it was cool stuff. It, throughout the years, played in many different bands. I mean, this is definitely a very big thing you're doing for a lot of LA-based bands. It gives them a chance to play, and this is, I mean, you had Cattle Decap yesterday. That was pretty awesome. They're local as well. Now, what do you think about a lot of these places shutting down on the Strip? The House of Blues shut down. Yep. We don't have Key Club anymore. What is your thought on that as far as how it affects metal? Well, the thing is, is that metal is is subversive music. It's uh, it's a counterculture thing. So the thing is, is uh, on the outside, a lot of people see metalheads. You know, they see the long hair, the black. You know, the the crazy imagery and all that stuff. But what they don't realize is that metalheads are actually some of the sweetest people that you'll ever meet, because it's a it's a very passion driven thing. Metal is like jazz. Like you know, it's like there's a lot of like you know everything. You live that lifestyle. You go out to the shows. You wear you wear. You're basically a billboard for it. The problem is, is that because it seems so scary on the outside, a lot of clubs are like, well, uh, these guys are going to run in a circle, they're going to fuck each other up, they're going to do this, they're going to do that, and um, but that's all that it is. I mean, when, when we have these clubs dying out, the Knitting Factory, the Key Club was just literally like a, a six months after that. The House of Blues died. Then you have, you know, there's so many clubs that come and go. It hurts us because... We can't have a metal show usually at like the Mint or the Dragonfly or any of those, but they're all awesome venues. But that's where I found this little brick building right here. And it's cool, by the way. yeah, it's a small place, but it's a that's it's a, it's a family atmosphere, like a family within. Yeah. Not you know where every metalhead is a family. When you're walking down the street in a strange town, you see somebody with a metal shirt. Is that fun? Yeah, you're like. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! And then that's it. Then you got friends. It's like that whole bike community, like biker community. Everyone looks out for everyone. It's the same thing with metal, and they're loyal. Like when I saw Kim Kardashian, like her face looks like the inside of a used fucking condom. I saw this bitch wearing like a Metallica shirt. It's like, what do you know about Metallica? They try to get metal fans because they're loyal. <laughs> This is actually pretty good. Are you going to continue doing this tradition of mini murder fest to let younger bands display their talents? Well, so this weekend has been about the spirit of it. It's, it's yeah, it is. It's 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 about honestly about people coming together and you know we we have we have the band selling merch. We have Warlord clothing over here. I have Tom Denny and Tony Cole. I have artists out here that are doing paintings and leather work. We have JP from, used to be Hell Death, now he's more of an empire. He does all his stuff. We have mega dogs out here. We got so many different people that work within our community. And this thing is like showing me, hey, you know what? This small version of it is, is cool. It, it's, it's something that we could come together and just have a good time. And it's gonna carry on. Whether it's the Big Murder Fest, which is the two stage, you know, 1500 plus people thing, or this thing, 
it's going to keep going. Well, I hope you keep doing it because you're doing a great job. And there are a lot of satanic Hispanics here we got to oh, yeah. represent. That's super important, oh, you yeah, know. That's L.A., man. You you can't. Hey, you know what Tupac said? It wouldn't be L.A. without Mexicans, that's man. Right. That's, yeah, that that's is true. that is the thing. I mean, satanic Hispanics and the and the Latin community, the Hispanic community in Los Angeles has been supporting yeah. metal for years. And a lot of people... They don't, like, when, when you have bands from across the world, when you have, like, somebody like Marduk, or you have somebody like Emperor, you have Samael, when they come over and they look out in the crowd, they're like, this is amazing. And it's like, hey, even go even further, go into Mexico City and play down there, and then you have, like, 5,000. The, the Hispanic community, a lot of people want to talk shit about them and fuck Trump. He will say to build a wall on them. Those dudes support this, and they work hard. And exactly. it's it's it, that's another community that's out here. This bitch doesn't even speak proper English, like seriously. How are you gonna say, oh, I'm gonna I, deport people when when, <laughs> when your family's probably when not here? It's a mail order bride or something, yeah. right? What do you think the hardest thing is about putting on a show? I know it takes weeks to promote this. How long, actually? How long were you promoting this specific festival? I uh, actually it does. Probably about six months without without any bands, and then you know the, about two months with bands. It was it was kind of I wanted to do more headliners, but problem is because of the time frame and everything. But we got everybody that came here and decided to play it was awesome. It was just and they've said nothing but nice things about you, and they're extremely grateful. Like that's the fun thing is you find these bands that are so grateful. Like I met Ex Mortis when they were first coming yeah. up, and they're doing so well that I hope you get them. I hope you continue Mini well, Murder Fest. Yeah, I've worked with Ex Mortis plenty of times. Those guys are awesome. Those dudes are. See, I always do that thing. I'm always like, ooh, fuck it, but. Ex Mortis is a band that used to play at the Knitting Factory for me all the time. Those dudes are grinders, man. Yeah. They're awesome. They, they come from that scene, Ex Mortis, Warbringer, Fueled by Fire, that whole like sneaker thrash revival thing, where I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, holy shit, I'm in a time warp. Like, it, it is good to see the youth embracing this culture and keeping it going because myself at, at 41, minus 20, so I'm 21, but I'm 41. These kids are the future. I mean, it's, it sounds so cliche, yeah, but it is. It's the future of America, and the future is looking bright when you have kids like that. What else do you see yourself doing in metal besides Mini Murder Fest? Do you see yourself branching out into anything like a distribution? Well, I mean, the thing is about, you know, I do shows all the time. Last year, in 2015, I did 165 events. I work with uh, I work with Golden Voices, a marketing company. Yeah, I, I, do, I do a lot, and I have a full-time job. I work with bands all the way from on the smaller side like Bombus and uh, Dead Lord. Then I work with bands like Entombed, oh, 80. I love Lars. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. I, and then I, I work with bands like Napalm Death and uh, Dark Funeral and all this stuff. So it's, I'm really connected in music only. I appreciate that. So good. I don't, I have a, I have a 40 hour a week job and then I do this at night. But you know what? It's it's amazing, and it's because of people like you that keep the scene alive and give these bands a place to actually grow and do something and hopefully become big one day. But I'm glad. Thank you so much Thank for you. doing this. And do you have any messages for aspiring promoters? Uh, don't get into it for the money. There is no money. Get into it for the passion and the heart and because you believe in what you do, and it'll be awesome. That, what's, I mean, the, that's it. what's the website? So, at churchoftheeighthday.com, you can get, and it's the it's the number eight, or you could just Google search it. Everyone Google searches everything. Just put it in Church of the Eighth Day, and you'll see everything that we do. Yeah. I think they're they're getting ready to have a ladder match over um, there. I know. I'm kind of scared. He's really skinny. I don't know if he's gonna like. He's trying to get an avocado. That's the best thing that Mini Murder has to offer. Really hard ass avocados. He's holding the ladder. Yay! Woo! Avocados! Just don't eat it right now. Wow. <laughs> well, don't forget to visit Church of the Eighth Day online. And thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad you're doing this. It really thank makes you. a difference because we don't have shows here. Thank you.